Hey guys, Derek here at Tap and Turn Gaming coming at you today with an EDH deck tech. Today's deck tech will be for my own personal Daxos the Returned EDH deck. Uh, he is one of the new commanders from C15. Let's take a look at him. So he is a 3 cost 2-2 uh, two -two zombie soldier uh, as he is the dead version of or undead version of the original Daxos because he was slayed by Elspeth, his lover. So that's some pretty cool lore for you. Him and Elspeth were laying together, as you could say. But what his ability is, is whenever you cast an enchantment, he gets an experience, or you get an experience counter. And then you can pay a colorless, a black, and a white, and you put a, um, a black-white spirit token that's also an enchantment onto the battlefield, whose power and toughness is equal to the number of enchantments you have cast, or equal to your experience counters, which you get from casting your spells. So obviously this deck is going to be pretty enchantment heavy. We do run quite a few enchantments to really make use of his ability. Also a few enchantment creatures because they also count as enchantments. But he's he's pretty cool. I really, you know, in the beginning I didn't really like him that much, but I was drawn to him because I have my blue white Daxos deck that you can also find on our channel. Uh, shameless plug there. But I, I like him. I think he, he's pretty cool in late game when you start churning out 7-7 seven, seven tokens repeatedly because he has 7 experience counters. That's really nice. So we're going to just move him off to the side here. We're going to go over the deck. So first up we have our land base. We just run 1, 2, 12 planes. Twelve swamps, command tower, cave of Koilos, goblet shrine, scoured barrens, shambling vent, tainted field, Orzhov Guildgate, Orzhov Basilica, evolving wilds, Terramorphic expanse, vault of the archangel, Keljorn outpost, Bajukabog, and Ameria the sky ruin. <coughs> Some pretty basic black white stuff. Um, not really a lot going on in the land base. Some dual lands, some Argyll lands, some tech lands. Now I'm going to go over my artifacts. We run Stryonic Resonator. Now what's nice about Stryonic Resonator is whenever I cast an enchantment to kick off Daxos' ability, I can copy that to give him two experience counters instead of one. But also a lot of the enchantments that I'm running are Oblivion Ring style of flex that when they come in they will exile a permanent. So I can use it to copy those abilities. So being able to Oblivion Ring two things at once, or Stasis Field two things, or Suspension Field two things, is really, really nice. And also I have things like Grave Pact, and I have things like Debtor's Now. So the doubling up on any of those kind of abilities are really, really nice. Stratic Resonator does a lot in this deck. Then we have Skull of Worm to be able to return target enchantment from our graveyard to my hand. Astronaut's Alta to be able to sacrifice my creatures. This is mostly in there, not for the mana so much as it is to avoid exile. Someone wants to exile one of my guys. And then we have Crystal Chimes to be able to sacrifice this to get back all my enchantments uh, from my graveyard to my hand. That's it for artifacts. Not really a lot there. Just a small package. For Planeswalkers, we are running Liliana of the Dark Realms. She's predominantly in here for the ability to tutor for a land every turn. We want to make sure we're hitting those land drops. Uh, she does have the ability to kill creatures, and she does also have the ability to make my lands tap for four. But it's predominantly for her ability to tutor for lands. Then we're running Soren Solemn Visitor. Um, he can give our guys plus one, plus one, a lifelink. Uh, he can churn out tokens, and we get emblems that do cool things. He's mostly in there to just get the uh, the tokens. We're going to plus one, then minus two, then uh, plus one, then minus two, and just keep getting tokens until we can't use them anymore. Then we have Soren Lord of Innistrad. Uh, most of the same with him. We're just going to keep using him to generate tokens to be able to protect ourselves. He does have the ability to make the emblems that give us the plus one plus zero. We will use that in alternate um, with the token creation. That's mainly what he's in here for. And then we're running Elspeth Terrio because if we're running Daxos, who was killed by Elspeth, we might as well run Elspeth. Um, she's mostly in there for the uh, the gaining life for every creature we control. It's going to offset some of our draw things that lose us life, but also because she does make spirits as well. And then. Uh, she has her other ability to just destroy all permanents except lands and tokens, and we are going to be generating some tokens, so that's why she's in there. For our tech spells, as I'll call them, we run Dark Petition for the potential to get the three free mana and off the tutor. Diabolic Revelation to be able to tutor for a couple cards. 
replenish to be able to return all enchantment cards from our graveyard to play, which is very, very nice. And open the vault to be able to return all of our enchantments and artifacts um, to the battlefield as well. So replenish, replenish and open the vaults serve great purpose in this deck. For sweepers, we just run a few sweepers here. Day of Judgment, End Hostilities, Extinguish All Hope, and Life's Finale. Extinguish All Hope is actually really, really nice in this deck because of the fact that it destroys all non-enchantment creatures and the tokens that Daxos make do happen to be enchantments. Now we're going to check out our creatures. For creatures we're running Otherworldly Coinsmith, Mesa Enchantress, Monk Idealist, Athreos God of Passage, a Johnny's Chosen. A Johnny's actually really nice in this deck because with a Johnny, whenever we generate a token with Daxos, that token it does happen to be an enchantment, so that will kick off him to get a 2 2 creature. So it's pretty nice. Heliod, God of the Sun, Erebos, God of the Dead, Archon of Justice, Doomwake Giant, uh, Bloodgift Demon, CDC Undead Vizier, Sun Titan, Ashen Rider, Treasury Thrall, Silent Sentinel, Runescarred Demon, Shieldred Whispering One, and Angel of Despair. So as you can see, basically our creatures are all going to either net us something or destroy something. Um, you know, it, it is EDH. You'll almost never see just a, a vanilla creature. But now we're going to get into the last section of the deck and really what this deck is built on, and that's the enchantments. So as you can see, it's, it's quite a thick part of the deck. Probably a third of the deck alone is enchantments. But we run Spirit Bonds. Spirit Bond is nice because whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control, we get a 1-1 Spirit, and we can sacrifice a Spirit to make something else indestructible. So that's that's pretty cool. Journey to Nowhere, so we can exile a creature. Quarantine Field lets us exile any number of things we want, as long as we pay the double mana for the colorless. Suspension Field lets us exile a creature with Thrower 3 or greater. Luminarch Ascension is going to let us generate some creatures. Animate Dead is going to animate something. Dance of the Dead is going to let us animate something. Oversold Cemetery lets us get things back. Better Blossom gets creatures. Gift of Immortality makes one of our guys basically indestructible. It's, it's like a pseudo indestructible. Shield by Faith gives us indestructible. Banishing Light is pretty cool because it lets us exile a creature. Um, Oblivion Ring lets us exile a non land permanent. Grasp of Fate lets us exile one permanent per player. Comic Justice lets us destroy something if something of ours gets destroyed. This is always fun. Phyrexian Arena for the draw, Necromancy for the res, Active Authority to exile something, Stasis Nair to exile something, Grave Pact just to be mean, Indestructibility for obvious reasons, Sigil of the Empty Throne for obvious reasons, Black Market to generate some mana, Dictative Erebos, another Grave Pact effect, Palace Seas, we'll generally choose uh, cons with this to be able to get creatures back unless our life total is getting kind of low, and then we'll choose Dragons to be able to gain life. Uh, Modder's Bond, another Grave Pack style effect, and Debtors Now will be able to let us res things. So that's more or less the whole deck. As you can see, it is pretty heavy on the enchantments, and that is because of what Daxos does and how he does it. So, uh, yeah, this has been Derek with Tap and Turn Gaming. This is my Daxos The Returned EDH deck. Hope you don't like it. Um, I'd like to see what cards you guys would run in it, cards I may have missed, you know, because it's always cards that you overlook and forget about. But this has been Derek with Tap and Turn Gaming. Please like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff, and we will continue on with our videos. Thanks a lot, and goodbye.